welcome back to my channel. My name is Marianne Osuji. I am a nursing student here in Canada and I am an international student which makes my channel more interesting because it is very difficult for an international student to come into Canada to study nursing. So in this video, I just want to focus on the SOP that is statement of purpose for those who do not know that I submitted which is one of the requirements for a visa application in Canada you have to submit a statement of purpose because Canada immigration do not really have like a physical interview yeah so you have to you know state write a statement of purpose telling them why you think just like an interview why you feel like you're the ideal candidate why do you feel like you deserve this Canadian visa why do you feel like oh uh, you why did you choose Canada to as your uh, country of study or country of choice you know those kind of things are what what is included in your statement of purpose so I'm gonna be sharing with you my statement of purpose because I have gotten information where people ask me several questions unfortunately like I said before I will not really have that time to really reply to everyone comment so and I also talked about how it's gonna be difficult for me to you know dish out videos as much as I would like to but I just uh, I'm just like kind of trying my best this is like a moment of holiday for me I've, I'm done with my first year nursing which is something I should be really excited about I don't know why I'm keeping a very serious face <laughs> so I'm done with my first year nursing and have this one month break is the longest break I have had over the last one year that I started school so I decided to like throw in as much as uh, as much videos as I can so please just uh, stick with me, subscribe to my channel. I know it's quite dry because I hardly post, but I'm going to make use of this one month to really dish out information that are beneficial for those who want to study nursing in Canada, those who want to uh, send their wives to study nursing in Canada, those whose siblings are interested in studying nurse or their husbands. <laughs> nursing is not a female career. It's female, uh, female dominated, but it doesn't end there. A man or a woman can be nurses. So for wife and husband who are interested in becoming nurses in Canada. And uh, just watch this video to the end. Share with your loved ones. Ask me questions in the comment section and I will try as much as I can to reply you. So listen to my SOP, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so I have my computer here. Yeah, that's my school UMB nursing. Uh, and for those who didn't watch the previous video, the nursing that I'm doing is a two years program. And like I said in my previous videos, I had challenges where um, agents that I wanted to use were telling me things like, oh, you can't just get nursing in, from Nigeria. Why don't you consider other courses, you know? But I did all of this myself. I am saying all of this to encourage people because of, you know, everything going on right now with immigration systems and different countries, you know, making the condition really tighter. You know, it's it was like that in my case because nothing is not something people get and I got no from lots of agents But I did it and I got it. So I just want to encourage somebody who is feeling like oh, are you sure I can get it? It is tedious, but if you follow the right stuff, I assure you that you're going to make something out of it Just go forward read my statement of purpose for you guys You know and just explain how I sold myself, you know and how I was able to Get this visa that I got that has you know brought me to Canada and have I'm done with my first year of nursing uh, by the grace of God Almighty next year I should be done towards this period I'm done with my preceptorship waiting for graduation or prob probably preparing for my NCLEX so jump into it SOP time I'm gonna be looking at my computer for a while so please do not be distracted when you see me uh, bending down and not focusing on the camera i'm just trying to like read out the sop if you have any questions let me know and i just want to warn people about plagiarism uh plagiarism is a big deal here in canada it is copying word for word what people have done without um citing them you also put reference so i would advise everybody that would want to like use this as a sample in writing their own statement of purpose to please not copy word for word because if these people put it in their system, they run it, they can just see that, oh, this was from me. And I'm already here, so I'm not the one with the issue. It is you, okay? So just try as much as you can to, you can to really understand how you're going to put your own. Don't copy word for word, okay? That's just the advice that I have. I just want to show you guys how I was able to sell myself. So here you go. 
so how i wrote my sop is i just started with my name and i wrote statement of purpose i didn't put all the whole address and every other thing so it's just my name and statement of purpose and then it depends on you and how you're able to sell yourself mine is about five pages and the first one that i wrote before i did the editing was about nine pages so i had to cut it down to five because i feel like it was too much but because of the no that i got from agents i was like no i have to do something right this Mary Ann Chiwendu Osuji, Statement of Purpose. My name is Mary Ann Chiwendu Osuji, and I wish to humbly apply for study permits. Having been privileged to be accepted by the prestigious University of New Brunswick into the very competitive Bachelor of Nursing degree program, I put in bracket accelerated program. Having acquired a, bio, a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and excelled in all prerequisite courses, and the CASPA test, an online open response situational te judgment test required of me before I could be considered for acceptance into the program. The, this program is a three-year program with a third year designated for the registration and writing of the National Council Licensure Examination upon a successful completion of the first and the second year of the program. Attached herewith are my UMB acceptance letter and my transcript from UMB for the six prerequisite courses that I undertook. Now, that's like my first paragraph. And the reason why I said it's a three year program is because in my school, they put it three years, you know, just for you to have opportunity to write your class. they didn't want any issue. And I want you to also notice how I put in bracket attached here with uh, my UMB acceptance letter, my transcript from UMB and the six with the six prerequisite courses that I took. I already said all of this in my previous video. So at every point as I was like writing my SOP and I attach any document, I put it any document to back up my claim. I try to let them know that the documents are attached. So I'll go to the next paragraph. Happily married and I, I called my husband's name. Uh, to a civil engineer with a pensionable employment with the uh, I talked about where he works and uh, I attached attaches his appointment letter his pension statement his certificate of registration for engineering practice in Nigeria and Our marriage certificate, you know that like what I said backing up the claim And then we have been married up to eight years now and I'm blessed with three lovely kids and then I mentioned their names I also talked about attached here with are their birth certificates. My husband has been very supportive of my dreams and aspiration and would be my primary sponsor during this academic pursuit of mine. Now I have introduced my husband as my primary sponsor because we all know the importance of sponsor of a sponsor in in the whole visa process, you know. So I have listed that that my husband is my primary sponsor. I obtained my bachelor degree in biochemistry and I listed the year that I did that, which was 2020, 2011, sorry, from a university in Nigeria and I had a second class upper. I wrote it out there. And I also talked about my GPA with a GPA of 3.86 or 3.4 in Canadian format of grading. And then I wrote my statement of result and West evaluation reports are attached. In my last video, I encourage people to do West. It helps you uh, get your transcript uh, evaluated in Canadian standard and when like you're applying to a school and they say uh, our cutoff mark is 3.0 West already told you what you have so you don't begin to do the calculation because uh, Canadian standard is 4.7 I think when Nigeria is 5.0 so whatever you have kind kind of goes down you know after they've done their own evaluation and I am a very hardworking and focused individual with keen interest in academic and human capacity development. Upon my graduation, I got I got on a contract basis into a company. I didn't I will not mention the company here for safety reasons. Here in Nigeria, where I worked as a scientific field analyst. My job description exposed me to the regulation of the most vital substance for humans human existence, which is water. I was in charge of the chemical test to ensure fitness of the water being bottled for human consumption in FCT Abuja, Nasrawa, Kogi, Edo, Delta State, 
here in my home country, Nigeria. The experience was worthwhile. And then I also talked about, I also pursued I also pursued another dream in fashion industry why because i told you guys that I, I didn't do any work for almost 10 years all i did was have a shop i had a store and uh, my fashion brand as that then was emmy fashion so i was sewing for almost 10 years before i got back to school and imagine from a tailor to becoming a nurse so you should know what i am talking about so i also talked about introduced the fact that i was into fashion which i still run to date also my spouse and i jointly manage a flourishing pottery farm with over I, I talked about the capacity of the farm and i talked about the company and i talked about how the company is duly registered under the corporate affairs commission and i also talked about me being the sole signatory of the bank when i had to say all this however could not satisfy or replace my quest for academic development towards the improvement of human life right because why do you why do you want to leave all of this that you have and go into nursing so i had to let them know why so my affinity this is another paragraph my affinity for human development and caregiving got me to become a volunteer with a non-governmental organization nabil's care foundation yeah you can support the foundation whose mission is geared towards eradication of hunger in the society clothing the naked and also encouraging the girl child education especially within the northern part of my country where the girl child is educationally marginalized marginalized full stop and i said all these experiences have helped in shaping and improving my level of professionalism tolerance patience and dedication to human development it is pertinent to point out that my lifelong dream has been to become a nurse, care for people, and support humanity in general. Pursuing this dream is of, is of utmost importance to me, so I don't live the rest of my life in regret. So now I'm trying to let them know that, oh, if I don't become a nurse, I feel like I'm accomplished. But there's something about fulfilling your purpose in life. So I try to justify that. If I'm denied this opportunity, it's going to be like living a life of regret, which is something that, you know, um, I, I don't really know how to put it, but it's just like, you know, letting them know how important this, this thing is for you and how it's going to affect your mental health if you don't get to achieve your dreams. Because everyone knows how important it is to achieve a dream, set a goal for yourself and achieve it. So I had to put that part in. During the COVID-19 pandemic, I felt very bad. To only sit at home and watch people suffer and lose their lives without being able to render any help because I was not qualified to. I had taken my first shot at studying nursing in my country, Nigeria, at the Amadou Bello University, Zaria Kaduna State, a federal university, immediately after graduation from secondary school. But it was truncated by the corrupt system of the institution at that time yeah because that was my story i didn't make this up yeah which had my name intentionally replaced from the already published entry list with their own favored and preferred candidate this pushed me to obtain admission at a private university and i studied biochemistry instead as their nursing department was not approved at that time do you see that i try to justify everything that i say sorry i don't know having distraction i try to justify everything that i say and not just putting in things there because i want to put them whatever i say i try as much as i can to justify it so i chose not to undertake this nursing program in my country because of the unpredictable education system in nigeria you have to let them know why you're choosing to go somewhere else to study nursing and not remain in your country yeah, so I had to use this as an excuse, which is true. An unpredictable education system in Nigeria, where we experience lots of industrial actions, which scuttles educational plans and dampens the enthusiasm in most students. See attached article on industrial actions by university lecturers in Nigeria over the past years. Now, I printed out uh, articles where, that were talking about how schools were on strike, how lecturers are planning on going on strikes, 
and I attach that as proof. So whatever you say, as much as you can, try to let them know that you have attached this. They might not even go through it. The fact that you even made that effort to let them know that you did is important. So my choice for the University of New Brunswick is based on their global academic reputation and the uniqueness of the two-year advanced nursing program, which I am sure and confident to excel. Also, the seamless educational system of UMB makes it easier for international students. I experienced this during my online study of the six prerequisite courses as admission requirements into the advanced nursing program, which I opted to offer through the College of Extended Learning um, of the university instead of going in person for the fall term in 2022 of September, as clearly stated in my new degree acceptance letter. Because I, I already said all of most of this in my previous video. So if you watched my previous video, this part will not be confusing to you here. Yeah. Uh, you can do well to support me by going back to watch the video if you come across this one kindly subscribe to my channel Do not forget to do that. Please and share it with your family and friends Okay, so Studying via the UMB College of Extended Learning was an experience. I would never forget I speak highly of their efforts and I applaud the university for such excellence the vision mission and values of the University of New Brunswick are exceptional and the alumni uh, student reviews showed that they practice exactly what they preach. Furthermore, according to World's Population Review, based on the OECD's, and I wrote the full meaning organization for economic cooperation and development data that I got from the internet. So I can't just say Canada is the most educated uh, country globally with this so, so so percentage i have to let them know where i got that information from hence the reason why i put that so canada is the most educated country globally with 56.17 percent of adults meeting the oecd criteria its cultural diversity and very low crime rate makes canada a conducive choice of country for my study it is noteworthy that the Bachelor in Nursing Accelerated Program, which I am seeking at the University of New Brunswick Mountain site, requires that I be there in person, you know. So now I'm trying to let them know why I need this visa to come in person because I opted out to do the prerequisite online because I had the chance to do it. What do you think this does for me? It lets them know that, oh, this person is not desperate. She actually has a, she had a chance to come into the country, but she decided not to go. So now I'm trying to let them know that, oh, see, I'm not trying to jack <laughs> I'm not trying to jack I'm only coming because there's no way that I can do nothing online. I have to come down to uh, Canada, New Brunswick, Mountain to do this nursing because of the clinical aspect of my, of, of, of the whole career path that I have chosen. That is like why I have decided to come I apply for this visa this time around. I hope that's clear. Anyway, if it's not, let me know, okay? And then, as I briefly stated earlier, my spouse is my primary sponsor and would be responsible for my studies in Canada. Now, I have read about how many paragraphs, and if you listen to this paragraph, you will see how I place everything. I started with introduction of myself. I talked about how I'm going to the school that I'm going to, the choice of course. I talked about why I chose the course. So if you're writing yours, try to follow these steps. I talked about why I chose the course that I chose. I also talked about why I chose the school. I talked about why I decided not to do the course in my country that has how many nine, how many wonderful universities that are offering those courses. I talked about why I chose to come to Canada by saying that Canada is one of the most educated uh, country in the world, it's cultural diversity, safety, and all of that. Now, I am not talking about the most important part why most people get denied, which is sponsorship. I already talked, I already hinted previously from the first to second paragraph that my husband is going to be my primary sponsor. What does that mean? Because I have some money, not just my husband. I said primary because he will be the main sponsor secondary i have my own money i have paid some tuition you know and that should come as a proof that i am also doing some part 
but my husband is taking the will be taking the lead okay so i already started by saying as i briefly stated earlier my spouse is my primary sponsor and will be responsible for my studies in canada uh please see attached six month statement of his personal savings with so so so, so bank and i put up the amount with closing balance at as at 14th of june 2023 i put the amount that was there kindly note that he has initiated a form a payment of so 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 so, so amount from his so, so so bank account for the payment of my second term tuition attached is his form a processing slip also i have over time through the support of my spouse now is finances any money you have talk about it here any property you have talk about it here this is like towards the end of your statement of purpose through uh, uh also i have over time through the support of my spouse made deposit of over dash usd in cash to my domiciliary account touch is my so, so 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 domiciliary account statement with a closing balance of so 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 so, so this as at dash 23rd june 2023 so this will serve as part of my living expenses during my study there is also a closing balance of da 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 da, da in my personal echo bank account as at 23rd of june 2023 bulk of which came through the proceeds from the poultry farm because you have to justify why you have such amount of money what have you been doing yeah so i said bulk of which came through the proceed from the poultry farm business account is clearly shown in the attached bank statement for the payment of my first tuition i have initiated a form a payment of da -da -da -dash from my echo bank in favor of the university of new brunswick through its cibc tuition fee portal channel my form a is currently at the disbursement stage and my account will be debited as requested any moment attached is my echo bank statement and my form a payment process slip are you seeing the proof so don't say oh i don't have the slip screenshot anything you can create evidence for yourself don't begin to say oh i don't i can't download it i can't do this screenshot them and put them there let them know that you're a very serious person by giving them evidence so the CAD equivalent of the total amount in my spouse's dash account and my echo bank is approximately that that dash in CAD Canadian dollars, you know, just for them to know. Using the RICC's rate of so 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 as at 23rd of June, because I submitted my visa application July 3rd. So you see all this information and giving them the date as at this, this is what is there. Please note that my Fidelity domiciliary uh, account balance of so 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 amount and the poultry account balance of so 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 amount are not included in that total amount of USD that I gave them above. Attached also is our poultry's uh, statement of account with a closing balance of this as at 21st of June 2023. I believe that this is enough proof to show our capability of financing my study travel plan. However, however, very important. In the case of any financial gridlock during my study that may be occasioned by any unforeseen circumstance, my spouse and I own some property which could be utilized to sort out our financial obligation to UNB. Attached are documents and photographic evidences of the properties also attached is my spouse affidavit of financial support and sponsorship additionally my immediate younger brother is a canadian citizen and has pledged his sincere willingness to support me should there be any unforeseen eventuality of financial assistance requirements attached is his birth certificate a letter of support and, rec and uh, recommendation. Did you see how I attach all that? I even attach his picture to show that he's my brother. I attach his birth certificate. I attached letter of recommendation and support. And he, I told him what to write. 
like obviously tell him what you you have already stated here so that whatever he's writing goes in line with it so having gone through the terms and condition of being a canadian study permit holder it will be a great pleasure to honor a great pleasure and honor to be availed such opportunity as i am a law abiding individual and always of good conduct continue to sell yourself to the end this is now why you're telling them i have provided all this information this is who i am i don't look for trouble i am obedient i obey people's law i don't i am like I'm, i just want to better my life you know you let them know all of that now you try as much as you can to back it up and i said i'm not a violent person and have never been involved directly or indirectly in any sort of crime in nigeria attached is my clearance letter from the nigerian police also attached respectively are two reference letter from the parish priest of the catholic church that i attend if you are pentecostal you could get the letter from your head lead pastor or general overseer as the case may be and participate actively in and also the non-governmental organization i volunteered with granting me the opportunity to finally achieve my dream would definitely be one of the greatest highlights of my entire life and i would never take such opportunity for granted thank you for granting me audience and for patiently going through my application i am being optimistic that my application will be favor favorably considered. Yours sincerely, Mary Ann Chiwendu Usuji. So this was my SOP that I wrote and that I wrote by myself. My husband was my editor. He edited it for me, you know, and we did everything ourselves. And by the grace of God, I am here today, done with my first year nursing, proceeding to the second and the last year and by the special grace of god towards this time preparing for my end class in 2025 and will become a registered nurse registered nurse is not lpn licensed practical nursing registered nursing excuse me is not patient support worker which is what i do right now registered nursing is one of the most difficult nursing to get as an international student that is why i'm encouraging anybody who is discouraged or how do I get masters in Canada? How do I go about with all this attestation that they need? I am encouraging you to not give up, push. I got no from different people, but today I'm here studying nursing as evidenced by my little uh, sticker at the back of my laptop. And I just can't lie about studying nursing. Yeah, so uh, don't give up, push. If you have any question regarding this statement of purpose, Please do not hesitate to ask me, send me messages. I know I received the message that I'm yet to reply to. It's crazy studying nursing under two years, something you do normally in four years. So please try and understand that I might not be there to give you everything, but as much as I can, I'll be releasing videos with lots of information. Um, I feel like we should have the culture of listening to people from beginning to end because everything that we need is there. When I was trying to go to Canada, like come into Canada, get my visa, do everything by myself, I watched the videos that were about one hour and I listened clearly. I stop, I replay. When I was doing my statement of purpose, I listened to lots of people's statement of purpose. I pause, I replayed, you know. So let us have that culture of listening to people because most of the information we are asking is already shared, but because we don't have the patience to listen, we come back to start asking questions that are already in different videos so please try and listen to my video i am going to cut this video into two this should be in the last part yeah and the first part will be somewhere it depends on where you start watching it from kindly go back subscribe to my channel like this video if it means anything to you or if it was helpful in any way tell me what you would like to know and uh in my second uh in the next video that i'll be posting I don't really know what I'll be talking about, but I'm going to talk about the journey. I've read my SOP to you. Uh, I don't really have much experience again. I think I've shared most of my journey that brought me here. I'm going to start sharing information on why I think coming to Canada and coming the right way is very important and not just japering because it's very important to come right, come in right. And I'll share information on how it is 
uh, transitioning into the Canadian culture and the system subsequently. Thank you so much for sticking with me and for watching my video to the end. Please, I beg you, do not forget to subscribe and share my videos with your loved ones. Thank you. Mm.